Nikki Haley claimed she was a victim of racism, uh, teased every day for being brown. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's got to be tough. So let's kind of go through this. Uh, Where did the brown go? She's white. Uh, uh, no. She looks Vinny. really white. Vinny, you got to respect the story. Just please, like, I'm be sorry. a little bit compassionate Look, for okay. people's challenges in their life. <laughs> so uh, let me read this. Hang tight for me. All right, here we go. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley claimed she was a victim of racism in her early childhood during a recent interview. Haley was born in the U.S. to two Sikh parents from India. Thus, Haley claimed while speaking with NBC Sunday caused her to have a difficult upbringing while growing up in South Carolina. We were only Indian. We were the only Indian family in our small southern town. The Republican said I was teased every day for being brown. So anyone that wants to question it can go back and look at what I've said on how hard it is to grow up in the Deep South as a brown girl. During the interview, Haley also noted her hesitancy to name slavery as a cause of the Civil War. While on the campaign trail, the response, she said, was due to her belief in such information's automatic. If I didn't mention slavery on that day, it's because that's an automatic. She said the Civil War has always been known about slavery. So watch this. Nikki, this this is why I have a problem with your approach and why so many people we talk to in the street, regular people, not elitists like you, I'm just talking regular people, uh, who will look at you and the way you're packaging your 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 candidacy versus Vivek. Okay. Vivek never uses color as a feel sorry for me. Never. You use it to get sympathy, okay? Vivek, um, the, the people who are voting for, he's also Indian, okay? He's not sitting there saying, I was teased for being brown, okay? There is no feeling you get from Vivek for being a victim. I post a video the other day. And by the way, we did this video while I was in Palm Beach. If I, look, if I show, I want you to see this here, Adam, because most people think I made this video because of Vivek. It just kind of timed perfectly. I'm going to show you when I posted this video, uh, 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 Adam, and I want you to sh tell me the date, okay? Mm -hmm. When is the date for this video? Okay, boom, 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 boom. Here's the date. What's the date? January what? It says January 15th at 4.57 p.m. Can you pull up when the Babylon B story came up about Vivek and 7-Eleven, okay? Uh, and it, it's just so accidental that the timing of it was perfect. What's the date? Is it that one? Go to Babylon B website. Okay, what's the date on that? 16th. 16th. That's the next day. The next day. So they were inspired they, by you. I mean, I mean I, so <laughs> I get this video, and I put it on Twitter, not thinking anybody about anything about it, but watch what Vivek does. Go to Vivek's Twitter account. Vivek says, thank you for coming, and don't forget to grab a Slurpee. He's got a sense One of humor. One side, man. if I would have done this with Nikki Haley, she says, this is why racism exists. Racism, Patrick. What does Vivek say? Please grab a Slurpee on the way yeah. out. Nikki, America loves Vivek for this reason, yep. and America is sick of the bullshit that you're doing to say, here, feel sorry for me because I was brown as a kid. Cry me a flipping river for taking that approach. America's fed up with these types of comments, Okay. You made it to the top. Instead, the message could be, look, you know, everybody has their own set of challenges of coming to the top. We all have ours. You have, you've had yours. But look, I, what racism? Look at me now. We've had a black president. We've had all these people that are winning at the highest level. Why are we making this a big deal today? Rather, you use it as a method of trying to divide and need some sympathy votes for people to feel sorry for. Again, it's not attractive. From a leader standpoint, it's not attractive. And, and by the way, somebody said something yesterday. It was so interesting. They said Tulsi Gabbard is everything Nikki Haley wished she could have been. Wow. Okay? Wished she could have been, and she's not, versus Nikki Haley is closer to a Hillary Clinton than a Tulsi Gabbard. No doubt. People want somebody that's real that's talking to you. She does not give me that. And by the the way, more she talks, the more feeling I get that her and Hillary are related. One hundred. And by the way, can you go back to that video? Just how, you know, my grandmother once told me before she passed away, never trust anybody that has leather shoulder pads. <laughs> Look at what the hell whoever picked that's that up. That's what grandma told you. Of, my of grandmother anything. said. Never that's, trust. That's it. wise, by the way. Pat, do look at what the collar. Never question a Syrian wisdom. There's thank you. There it is right respect. there. But by the way, you got to give credit to Vivek Ramaswamy <laughs> because he never, he never uses the race cards. He never uses it as an excuse. Give his his whole argument is against wokeness yeah. and and DEI and ESG. So it's antithetical uh, to what, what he stands for. What he you know tweeting about the Slurpee that people thought that he was going to be upset. He leaned into the joke. That's amazing. You saw that what he did the other day, you know, UPS 
did a big tweet and he retweeted, what could Brown do for you? Like, Vivek don't play when it comes to jokes and race. He jo enjoys it. It's, it's, just unattr it's just unattractive. It's just not, nothing about, by the way, it's like the whole hmm. Juicy Smollier. Like you, you want attention. Juicy, juicy Smollier. Juicy Please Smollier. Say yeah, my, my bad. But it's like she knows she's drowning. So what, what's the, what card do you play? And you racist. Feel, ba oh, feel bad for me. As if that's going to get you votes. She's dead in the water. Tom, be honest. For you, a man that's open-minded, do you sympathize with the level of racism that she experienced as a child for being brown? No, I, and I think Elizabeth Warren has been completely exposed for the things that she... Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, we're talking about somebody else? Oh, yeah. Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. Well, Nikki Haley has, yeah. has once again has played the, you know, the Elizabeth Warren card, trying to, trying to use... So unattractive. Trying to use color, Staying race, or, or association to create affinity, yeah. and, but it's affinity not with, not with um, you know, achievement and anything to be proud of. It's affinity with victimhood. And I think the whole victimhood thing is disgusting to people. I think that's what makes Vivek, you know, attra attractive to people in his message. He said, so you know what? He's not a victim. He's just getting up there and he's doing his thing, speaking it, and he is who he is. Who do you think's decision that was to do that? Because, I mean, she has a team, right? Is that her decision to bring that up? Or somebody goes, you know what? Go for the brown race. It's her strategist and handlers that are telling her, don't bring up slavery. Guys, that's what they didn't I'm, want her to I'm say. I'm going to tell you this. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you this. It's 100% her decision. What are, you, what are you talking about? It's your decision. Mm. Everybody can give me feedback, whatever they want to give me. I made the decision. I'm a shot caller. You're a shot caller. That's your decision. We can easily, and by the way, even when you say, like, you know, when I give the story about Romney on the flight with Bill O'Reilly, I'm going to Vegas. Somehow, some of us are sitting right next to each other. I'm like, hey, what happened? Why did Romney lose? I thought he was going to win. And he says he listened to his campaign strategists that said, don't be mean on the last one because you beat him up so hard. Obama with Benghazi on the last one. You're losing single female voters. So talk about salads. Oh, I'm not, not saying salads. <laughs> yeah, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, okay, you're in a room. Your, your campaign strategist comes up to you and says, Vinny, mm -hmm. on this next campaign, wear shorts and a tank top. Show your tattoos in the debate mm -hmm. because if you do – you're going to get the single female vote, and middle America is going to like you. How short are the shorts? Now, if you, <laughs> you do it. if you sit there and you say, what a freaking great idea, you deserve everything you get, okay? <laughs> everything yeah. you get. You're yeah. going to be very famous to show up there on stage and do your thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, th that's the part where you got to make a decision and say, look, this is my brand. You know what my brand is? Black shirt. Nice little cross that I just bought, just sick hair. with my Manek money. I got a nice watch. I'm wearing yeah, my Oakley. nice, and I'm coming Sock out. And let you me put tell in you. your pants just and to kind of look a guess little bit what? bulgier. Oh, Why do people you. love you? Because you're Vincent Oshano. You're authentic. That's true. The more pe I'm being very sincere yeah. with you. You're loved the way you are because you're straight up and you're sincere and authentic. And some of these politicians just don't even know how to do that. It's let me go give a speech here to one of these guys, or I'll flip again, come and give the speech here to one of these guys, or I'll go over there and give this guy... You know, say what you want about DeSantis. Whether you like him or don't like him politically, he is who he is. I, I, you know, I asked him a question about his boots. I was hoping he would do something so people would laugh and he would laugh at himself. Kind of like a self-deprecation moment. Guess what? He doesn't know how to do that. He just doesn't have that. Vivek has it. Trump has it. You know, uh, Clinton has it. Some people have it. He, even George Bush has it. Remember he went on and, you know, uh, oops, or, you know, all these other things. I'm not talking Governor Perry, but even George Bush, he knew how to laugh at himself. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting thing to have. America likes that. He doesn't know how to do that, but at least he stayed very consistent. He shared his values. And America said, no, man, you're not number one. Maybe you'll have a different job. But Haley is... Uh, well, I think part of the reason that you're upset by this, when I, probably a lot of Republicans are upset by this, is because typically identity politics and race politics is owned and operated by the left and the Democrats. What are you doing? So, yeah. um, you know, that's how we have a vice president named Kamala Harris, because they didn't, they weren't looking on meritocracy, they weren't looking on policy, they weren't even looking on personality. Quite frankly, they were looking to check a box for the VP, and boom. You know what would you make sense though? Her. You know what would make sense though? Yeah. Here's what would make sense. Okay, <sighs> Tom. Uh, um, Chris, odds of this, odds of this, okay. The, 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 you know how, when's the last time a candidate from the right left the party? 
who's the last person that left the party? What do you mean the candidate on the right? Somebody from the right that left the party. You know, well, RFK Dick just Cheney. left a left a left and went and became a what? He became she beca- he became an independent, independent right? Yeah. Tulsa le- Tulsi left the left, and she went and became independent, an independent, right? Yeah. But when's the last time somebody on the right left? Not to go to the left. Sometimes no, no go to the center. Yeah, yeah. Republicans leave to go to independent status. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Guess what, Nikki Haley? Maybe that's a good strategy for you. Exactly. Go, go, be that. Go be a you know center left person, and use your skin color, racism, and female and women and all this stuff. Maybe that audience will like you. And by the way, in New Hampshire, you know how many Democrats they were talking about wanting to vote just so Trump loses in New Hampshire? She's getting Democratic votes. Maybe she'll get some votes on the other side. So what if she left the party and went and became a Democrat or center left? That would be interesting. Joe Lieberman. Well, this goes to my this goes to my initial point where I think in 2024 this might help her a little bit, but when she loses to Trump, this is going to backfire tremendously in 2028. So she's going to get a little bump in New Hampshire. She might compete in South Carolina, not really. But when all is said and done, in 30 days when she drops out of the race, MAGA on the right wing won't will not forget who she is. Her career will officially be finished. But Ron DeSantis, because he ran to the right of Trump, will still have a chance in 2028. Well, Nikki just says I'm a I'm a Democrat now, and then she runs and, with uh, I don't Michelle think she Obama. Is. I think she's I a would. corporate bureaucrat. I don't think she's a Democrat. I think she's taking the money. She's playing the identity politics. Which, she's by the, the way, game. okay, right there, she's taking the money. Of course she is. So watch this. Why does he like Dave Portnoy's deal? Why is Chris happy about Dave Portnoy's he deal? Because took equity. Because when somebody takes equity, what are they saying? I Trust really believe in long term on what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But there are some people right now that are calling me, and I'm talking to them, and they're saying, hey, man, I want to sell my podcast for this, 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 and that. I said, you want me to get you a buyer? I'll, I'll introduce you to Chris. I'll introduce you to this guy. I'll talk to them. See what they want. Okay, if you're looking for a check. These people get a lot of eyeballs, right? There are guys in the political side that just want a check. There are guys that want a partnership. There are guys that want equity. Dave wants a partnership. That's what Dave's got with the announcement that you made today, right? But I think Nikki Haley, obviously, going and sitting on the Boeing uh, uh, board, board, that's money. You didn't go to Boeing because you're like, oh, my God, I just love the planes you guys make. You guys change people's lives <laughs> yeah. with these doors opening and the plane in Miami Engine's on fire. Burning. Isn't that great? It's like better than fireworks. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Can you play the video of the Miami plane? Oh, Boeing just on fire exciting. flying, the lady is screaming, saying, what the hell is going on? So guess what, Democrats? If Adam says she's a, what did you call her? She's a corporate? A corporate uh, stooge? Oh, I don't know what I call her. That's right. the, by the way, that's the plane. And, and I want this lady to say her thing, and then I'll give my yeah. sincere this shout out to This is a Boeing in Miami. In Miami. Listen to this lady. Oh, you don't have the lady what she says because she's all. Well, dude, what she's that's saying. all my luck. That'd be the flight that I'm on. I'm just telling you right now. Yeah. But look you, at that. She's fire. Oh my god! Sorry. Imagine you're on that flight. Oh. It's on fire. And they have to turn Mom. around and come back. By the way, there's a reason why people are afraid of heights because oh. they were on a flight like this for the rest of their life. They're miserable. <laughs> Let me finish this up. So maybe this isn't even a message to Nikki Haley. Maybe it's for Democrats that listen to the podcast. Many do. Maybe this is an opportunity for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, go, this is an opportunity to get somebody to go on the left. You know how big of an announcement that would be for the left if they announced? Nikki Haley, who was the person that almost beat Trump, she finally saw the BS in Trump. She is now a Democrat. Wow, the trade. It would be a brilliant strategy for the left to consider. I think big time. And then guess what? She, and then once Mich- Michelle Obama goes, hey, I'm running. Maybe she runs have her start VP. a podcast on Rumble. Do a podcast <laughs> on Rumble. and call it she We is. Trade It. The Trade. <laughs> but by the way, you showed that video. The trade, the, right? Yeah, the Miami. I just, I don't know why the first thing that jumped in my head, Adam, was a flight attendant going, just Jesus Christ, just don't look up. <laughs> the flight attendant on that airplane, they must have been going crazy. The whole engine was up. It, it was a cargo plane, so I don't believe oh, there were any passengers nobody, oh, on it. Oh, that's boring then. There goes my joke. Great. It's just a metaphor. Thanks for ruining everything. That's just a metaphor for the last week of her campaign. That's what. Whether it's a whether it's a cargo plane or not, it's a Boeing plane. No. Yeah. Rob, is that it a was. Boeing plane? It was. It, it, it was a Boeing. Is it, it's, yeah, Boeing seven four seven eight test. cargo. Plane. Boeing's not doing well, and then the ESG and the doors—they're killing well, they it. They just announced after last week they're like moving forward. We're gonna have convertible planes. Really? <laughs> yeah, with outdoor swimming pool. God. Nice. Just go take a bath in the back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey! 
<laughs> Latest uh, uh, new uh, advancement in Boeing, they're introducing wow. convertible planes. <laughs> and by the way, by the time the flight is done, everybody's got slick back hair. Forget about Botox. You're just, yee, going like this. And frostbite. <laughs> Anyways, oh, folks, this is a God. joke. Don't go share the story oh, with others. Boeing is introducing convertible planes. That wouldn't work in today's economy. It would be a bad idea to take that flight. Guys. Anyways, we oh got a lot God. of other stories to cover. We'll do one home team together as well. This has oh been a blast. God, Chris, so cool. you the man. Happy for you. Congrats. Congrats Big bro. deal. Phenomenal story to go from where you're at to where you are now. And, uh, you know, dropping out and, you know, doing what you're doing with websites. And then all of a sudden you build this thing and turns into... 60 million people visiting the site, getting millions of eyeballs. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.